Hey everyone, welcome back. So today in this video series, we are going to learn about the top 50 text interview questions along with answers that is commonly asked by every interviewer during the Power BI interview process. Okay. So if you are one of them who is preparing yourself for Power BI interview, then you have arrived into the exact place. Let me clear you first, in this DAX interview questions and answer video series, we are not going to see every DAX functions thoroughly by giving the example and all and all. Because I have created this video series only for the interview purpose, okay? So here we will learn what are those top 50 common DAX questions that every interviewer asks and how you should give the answer for those questions so that the interviewer will become happy to hire you all right so let's get started with our first question so what is dex dex is a library dex is a library of functions and operators with the help of which we will able to create formulas and expressions in power bi okay so what is dex dex is nothing but it's a library of functions and operators with the help of which we will create different different formulas and expression for power bi okay so uh, basically when we exactly we use this dex so dex is basically used for three things first is for creating columns second is for creating tables and third is for creating measures in power bi or excel okay then the next question is how would you rate yourself in dex this is one of the most important questions that every interviewer asks to you during the interview process okay so before going to the interview you must prepare for this one all right so let me give the example how you should uh, give the answer of these questions all right so i can say yes this is a very interesting questions and i can rate myself seven out of ten in dex functions i can't say i know every dex functions because dex is a very very fast field and it's not easy to remember all the dex functions at a time but I know the basic how we can implement the DAX. So whenever it will require, I can check that from Google and implement the DAX in our Power BI report. Okay. So in this way, you will give the answer of these questions. Then the next most expected question is, what all DAX functions have you used in your previous project? So before going to the interview you must prepare for this question as well because these are the common questions that every power pay interview asks to you okay so just remember 10 to 15 dex functions and not only remember but also you have to understand how those dex functions work okay because anytime they can cross questions to you on those dex right so be ready for that okay so the expected answer for this question is yes sir i have used so many different type of dex function for my previous project and those are replace function round function calendar all calculate calculate table format count count x count ax max max a average all these dex function i have used whenever it required in my previous project okay so in this way you have to give the answer of this question all right then the next question is what is the difference between sum and sum x dex function in power bi so the difference is in case of sum sum is a aggregate dex function so it will work on aggregation mode okay which calculate the sum of all numbers in a particular column all right but in case of sum x dex function, it is a expression based function. It means in this function, we can apply some input or we can pass some parameter for doing the calculation. 
okay so we can say sum x dex functions is used to return the sum of an expression for each row in a table all right that's why here you can see both in case of sum and sum x dex function return the scalar value it means they both return a single value okay but in case of sum dex function it work on columnar level whereas in case of sum x it work on row level all right in case of sum dex function expression are not allowed but in case of sum x expression is allowed it means we can pass parameter or any input in the expression section okay then here you can see the syntax of the sum dex function that is sum then column name of a particular table okay but in case of sum x dex functions the syntax is sum x then you have to pass the table name then you have to pass the expression name okay so these are the few difference between sum and sum x dex function in power bi all right then the next question is what is the difference between max max a and max x dex function in power bi okay so in case of max dex function it return the largest value in a column or between two scalar expression okay and here is the syntax max then inside the bracket you have to pass the column name all right or you can also write the different syntax that is max and then inside the bracket you have to give the expression one comma expression two okay so this is the example there is there is max then inside the bracket you can pass the salary column of the employee table so what will be the result for this it will give the maximum salary of the salary column in employee table right and in the other hand if you will pass two parameter inside the max tax functions that is 50 and 100 then it will give you the output as 100 because between these two expressions that is 50 and 100 the maximum value is 100 correct so in this way max dex function work all right on the other hand it will work with number text date data type but it will not work with boolean data type so always remember this max dex function is not going to work with boolean data type all right and max dex function work with columnar level all right so these are the few things that you have to understand for max dex function okay then the next is max a dex function so max a dex functions return the largest value in a column all right and the syntax is max then inside the bracket you have to pass the column name okay for example max then salary column of employee table so it will give the maximum value of the salary column of the employee table as the output right and max a dex function work with number date and boolean data type but it is not going to work with text data type okay and in the other hand max a dex function also work with columnar level as the max dex function okay so this is about max a dex function then the next is max x dex function so in case of max x dex functions it return the largest value that result from evaluating an expression for each row of a table all right and here you can see the syntax that is max x then inside the bracket you have to pass the table name then comma expression so here is the example that is max then inside the bracket you have to pass the table name that is emp okay and then column name that is emp inside the bracket you have to pass the salary right so you can also provide any filters on this or any expression for example emp salary equal to one lakh right so in this way you can write a max x dex function in the other hand max x dex function work with number text and date data type but it is not going to work with boolean data type all right and max x dex functions work with table level it is not going to work with columnar level okay and we can also declare any filters in max x dex functions okay so these are the few difference between max max a and max x dex functions in power bi all right then the next question is what is the difference between average average a and average x dex functions in power bi so let's start with average so 
the average tax functions return the average of all the numbers in a particular column. Here you can see the syntax. The syntax is average and inside the bracket we have to pass the column name. Remember the column that we are going to pass inside the average DEX functions, it must contain the data related to the numeric. It means the data must be the numeric one. Okay, because average DEX function doesn't support logical and text type of data. And in the other hand, if a particular cell contains the zero value, that also average DEX function include this. But it doesn't support logical values and text type of data. Okay, then let's see about average A DEX function. So, average A DEX functions return the average of the values in a particular column, but it can handle the text and non numeric values as well. As we have seen before, average DEX function doesn't support logical and text type of data, right? But in case of average A, it supports the text and non-numeric values as well. And the syntax is average A and inside the bracket we have to pass the column name, right? So let's see how the average A DEX functions handle the text and non-numeric values. So here you can see the average DEX functions support the logical value. For example, if it is a true, then it consider as 1. And if it is false, then it consider as a zero. And if it is a text value, then also average A considers this as a zero. Okay. Apart from that, if it's a empty text, then also average A DEX functions considered is as the zero. Okay. And if it is a non numeric text, then also average A DEX functions count it as a zero value. Okay. Then the next is average X DEX function. So, the average x tax function is used to calculate the average of a set of expression evaluated over a table. Okay, and here you can see the syntax. The syntax is average x, that is, inside the bracket, you have to pass two things one is table name, and another thing is expression. Okay, so remember both the table name and expression arguments are required for average x. All right. And the another thing is that average x text functions follow the same rule as average. You cannot include any non numeric or null cell here. So, this is all about average, average a, and average x text functions. Okay. Then the next question is what is the difference between count, count a, count x, and count ax text function in Power BI? Let's understand first about count tax function. Okay, so count tax function is used to count the number of cells in a column that contain non blank values. All right, that contain non blank values. It means count tax functions count the rows of a particular column that contain numbers, dates, and string data type values. It will not take into consideration for those rows which contain blank and boolean data type. Alright. And here you can see the syntax of the count dex functions is count, then inside the bracket you have to pass the column name. Alright. So this is about count dex function. Whereas in case of count a dex function, count a functions also used to count the number of cell in a column that are not empty it means count a functions calculate number text and boolean but it will exclude the blank values all right and here is the syntax that is count a and inside the bracket you have to pass the column name all right then let's move to the count x text function so count x text function is also used to count the number of cells in a particular column that contain numbers date or text or string okay but it exclude blank and boolean values all right whereas in case of count ax dex functions it is also used to calculate the number of cells in a particular column but it take consideration into numbers text and boolean values but it also exclude the blank values all right so these are the main difference between count, count A, 
count x and count ax tax function. All right. Then the next question is what is the difference between group by and summarize tax function in Power BI? So let me clear you first. Both group by and summarize tax functions are used to extract the data from a table in Power BI. All right. But the difference is that in case of group by, the group by tax functions cannot do implicit calculations. Okay. That's where we take the help of current group function. It means whenever you are using the group by tax functions to do the implicit calculations, we have to add another function called as the current group inside the group by function. Okay. But in case of summarized tax functions, summarized tax functions can do implicit calculations. So we do not need to use any helping function for executing the summarized tax function. Okay. So these are the main difference between group by and summarized tax function in Power BI. All right.